know, if, if you think about the things he said, they're really powerful. Um, for as many of us who are Christians, that political sense thing is actually very critical. So I thought about, I mean, just being in a conversation where the topic is actually about how to rig an election, or actually going to the Baba's place to find out who is supposed to be your father. A number of us would have backed out. A number of us might not have engaged to get to that level where they will actually tell us how they intend to rig. But you know, today he has the experience because he's able to actually tell us firsthand. So we need to engage and have political sense. And if you think about, I mean, those of us who are Christians, if you think about men like Mordecai, Ezra, uh, Daniel, name it, these guys must have been like that because they were embedded in those kingdoms. Yeah, welcome back to the Platform Studio, and you're still watching. We just finished watching Pastor Francis Adebayo, who participated in the 2015 election. And I like the fact that he talked about himself actually entering the political process. And I'll just go back to the panel now. I think that was a very, that was a good example of someone who entered the system and gave us some of the interesting stories of things that happened to him during his time in that election. What, what was your takeaway from that? No, I, I think it's really very, um, it's, it's humbling in a sense, because when you think about it, people have to do something, and you're listening to someone who's done something, all right? And Wemi and I were having a conversation much earlier, uh, and I had said to him that involvement is not about winning. Exactly. All right? So people start by thinking that uh, I'll, I'll only do something if I know that I'm going to win. But actually, it's not about that, all right? It's really about in the first part, yes, you may win, but then again, you may not. But the most important thing is that you're fulfilling the thing that your heart is calling you to do. And as you start to do that, not for yourself, but for others even who are coming after you, begin to pave the way, prove the course, mm -hmm. make it easier for someone to navigate a little further mm -hmm. simply because you've broken the early ground. And I think he's done that for many people, not just in the mind. And, and I, I suppose that when someone hears... Pastor Francis Adebayo <laughs> as a name, all right? And then you now think um, running for election. It just breaks all kinds of barriers in people's minds. I, I think it's really, really good, even before I begin to talk about the subject itself. And I like the fact that he emphasized he did not regret that he lost. Instead, he gained knowledge. He Absolutely. has learned about the process. And now he's helped two people now enter the system, which is what you said, exactly. you pave a way for other people. Indeed, what did you take away from that? The two things I took away were, one, the issue of complicity mm -hmm. that all of us are guilty for the current state of affairs in our nation that we're collectively responsible for failure in our nation because of our it. unwillingness to step out and change the status quo and then the second thing i took away was the whole issue of performance standards what are the minimum performance standards that we expect from all levels of government from the local to the states, to the federal. And have we as citizens articulated those minimum standards? What he's done by entering the fray is that he's raised the bar of expectations. At the barest minimum, we expect that you'll be educated, that you'll be a person of integrity, that we can count on you. And when others come into the fray, they realize this is the basic expectation Nigerians demand of anybody who says, I'm going to run. I think for me, those were the two things that stuck, stuck with me. And I mean, I applaud him for raising the bar. He also challenged us to think about the future we envisage and our that. own personal responsibility in making that future happen. So is it electricity? Is it, you know, the generator thing? Whatever it is, what can you do about it? What is your own dream for Nigeria? And what is your role in achieving that dream? You know, I think that should be a hashtag. Hashtag in my lifetime. In uh, my lifetime. lifetime. Yeah. And I started. Yes. Hashtag, hashtag in my lifetime. In my lifetime. Because because for me, it gives you a sense of ownership. Yes. Absolutely. That then, in my lifetime, if I say this must happen, then I'm actually going to do something to make it happen. Exactly. Yes. So Please, let's, let's do that. <laughs> Hashtag in my Hashtag lifetime. In my lifetime. <laughs> actually, another good tweetable that he, he mentioned, if politics is dirty, let's be the detergent. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I like <that. laughs> You know? But, but what also uh, hit me was the fact that getting involved, what he did say was that getting involved as, as we had said earlier, it wasn't just about winning or even winning at all, but getting involved and getting involved in politics actually is an opportunity for community building. Yes. 
and, and that is something that, that hit me you know, as very interesting because he, he explained how he was involved uh, you know, at the party level and how he got involved in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if politics is not affecting people positively, then what is it? You know, and you don't have to be in Abuja to do that. Yes. You know, but then also there's also something else. Um, you know, uh, um, by by creating that support, he has strengthened his own voice in the party. Exactly. Which allowed him to sponsor others. Mm -hmm. So the more we get involved, even at that level, and create a, a pathway, you know, the easier it will be for you know another bright generation to come up with their ideas and dream big, you know, and as he said, you know, affirm these, you know, large ideas about what the nation should be and achieve them. Certainly. You know? And I think another thing that I like, especially like you pointed out when you hear Pastor Francis Adebayo, and a lot of times people are people of faith and the whole concept of politics is dirty. And I like the fact that he mentioned where it's not dirty, the corporate world is dirty, even in the, in the religious mm -hmm. institutions, you know, the, the, the things that we are saying is dirty, it happens even in the family structure. But then he gave the example of when they had to tell him to get a new house address and somebody um, adopted him. And that's some of the things that make us stay out because we think they're going to ask me to do things that are against my faith. And all you have to do is say no. It's simply a thing of integrity. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't step in. It's stepping and saying no. And what I liked is when you begin to do that, people see that there are honest people still in the world. Mm -hmm. And that itself changes a mindset. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, two things, mm -hmm. if I was to connect the po point you just made now with something that um, Wemi had said about how he had said that every politics is local. Mm -hmm. So I began to even reflect on the idea of the constituency as a conversation because mm -hmm. everyone has some local point where they're actually making a difference and they build off that as the basis, as, as the back of which their voice is resonating. Right. But at the end of the day, if you connect that with what he said about reputation, exactly. so lots of people um, are afraid that because politics is dirty, as is said, therefore my engagement or involvement in it means that my reputation is going to be tarnished. And he captures it excellently when he says that it won't spoil your name. Yeah. You do it all by yourself. Exactly. So if you choose to do things that are untoward, no one actually forced you. You may have been presented with that option, but you chose it. And if people can refrain from doing that and as indeed they say, raise the bar, then we set a new standard paving the way for a higher level of behavior and for people to actually believe that more is expected even of themselves exactly. and function at a higher level. Exactly. And just building on that, I think the challenge for us is how do we create a generation of individuals who choose to lead. I hate when we call politicians leaders. They have to demonstrate that they're leaders through the acts that, that they do. And this concept of social capital, you don't wake up one day and say, I want to be in political office. You have to have built that social capital at the community yes. level by what you do, by how you engage, by your community service, by the involvement that you have in the lives of the children in that community. Some of the people we scoff at who have been around for a long time as godfathers have paid their dues. They've been paying school fees for people. They've been providing for widows. We have to start in our own context, Definitely. making a difference, and build that social capital so that when we decide to come on the social national platform, we're recognized. Yes. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So we need to quickly go back to the hall now for the next speaker, but we are learning so much. But after the next speaker, the panel will be right back. You can see we're, we're connected. Yeah, but we're connected. Our next speaker. You're live at the platform placed at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos. Our next speaker is Mrs. Shola Salako Ajulo. She will come up after this short video. Shola Salako Ajulo. Shola is a versatile marketing and media professional with three decades of professional interaction with corporate and public brands, which consequently led her to pioneering the Consumer Advocacy Foundation of Nigeria, CAFON, an initiative to improve service delivery 
and consumer rights awareness throughout Nigeria. Shola is a former commissioner with the Lagos State Law Reform Commission and a well sought after and respected consultant on consumer rights issues. Currently, she has been appointed to the board of the Lagos Consumer Protection Agency, Las Copa, by His Excellency, Governor Akiumi Ambodi. to the thought process of how do we get our nation out of here. After listening to Pastor Adebayo, I asked him, what else do you want me to come and say here now? How, how you, you, have taken, you have said everything. But I guess I will build on what he has said. And being a teacher of sorts, I came with a slide. I hope you don't mind. Okay. And I was going to take Pastor Podju up on this. How come I am the only woman on this panel today? Do I speak for my women in the house, right? So I'm sure he will correct that at the next platform. We will keep an eye on him and make sure he does that. Okay, I'm going to be talking to you some, a little different. Um, I'm very politically active, but I'm not a politician. So I'm not going to be talking to you about politics. I'm actually an activist. I'm what you call an advocate. I'm an engager. I get involved. But not necessarily just for politics. But everything that you do as an advocate has an impact in how governance is done. So we're going to be looking at how we as citizens need to get involved in governance.